Okay. All right. Uh, in the name of my ancestor. Peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program. Known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your soul brother, number one. Of course, it's not my intent for this talk to be a uh, a long diatribe. I think that's how you pronounce it. But as you know, my intent is to be short, straight to the point, get out of here. But a lot of times it just it just don't go that way. So. We're just going to see how this uh, pans out. I appreciate those of you who are always here to support our uh, platform, to support our talks. I thank you so much. Uh, right now, we're not simulcasting. We're just here on Angel Snow Number 7. And we will download this uh, talk on our other channels, Facebook at a later time of course and don't forget to uh, subscribe to uh, our rumble channel and as soon as they allow free <laughs> live streaming from rumble we will be live streaming live from rumble and uh, rumble is almost getting very close to getting the same type of views as we get on uh, Facebook or here on YouTube so Rumble will be able to get their 10 views and I will be able to get my 10 subscribers on uh, Rumble subscribe to Angel Snub Up 7 Realities Temple on Earth on Rumble before we continue I would like to give us a uh, a moment of silence to a young man I did not know to a young man I did not even know exists but I was watching the news and some of you may probably know who I'm talking about this young man named uh, Kyrie Jackson he lost his life early in the morning in the Washington DC area he died in a uh, car accident. Drunk driver was involved. And uh, along with some of his uh, uh, high school mates or something like that, they were driving and, and a drunk driver caused the accident and they end up uh, losing their lives. And I want to talk about that as I go into our main topic. So let's just give a moment of silence to, to our soul brother, young man, Kyrie Jackson. Just want to give a moment of silence. I would like to officially say as a representative of this platform, the Realities Temple on Earth, I would like to send our condolence, our sympathies to Brother Kyrie's family. 
I can imagine the loss of this young man who had such a bright future. I believe he was part of that NFL draft. They just they just done it. He was just drafted into the NFL, National Football League. I don't keep up with a lot of these sports and things, so I I'm just trying to go by what I remember on the tell live vision, which this is probably true. This young man lost his life. A very young man. I would assume he's in his 20s, early 20s, something like that. What is so sad? I, I, I want to talk to some of these younger people. Also the old heads too. They should know better, but old heads is silly. But I want to talk to some of you younger people who believe and you assume that you have a long life. Unfortunately, this young man has come to the end of his life. And I'm very sure his family, himself, they a bright future. Breaking all kinds of NFL records. Money, fame. They probably gonna get some money because I'm I'm very sure, unless you're an idiot, this young man was should have been heavily insured. But what I want to say to younger people. And older folks, y'all are idiots. You should know better. I don't know how many times that I have been threatened with death. I don't know how many times people, I want, we want you dead. You should be dead. Die. Dead. dead. Wishing, wishing death on folks. I don't know how many times not in respect, but in mockery. I don't know how to listen to you, old man, old geezer, old head. You know, make, making mockery of people's age. Making mockery of wanting somebody dead. Life is not guaranteed to nobody. Here I am, I was diagnosed with cancer. Four years ago. How many people. Have left this planet. Within the four years. And people was wishing me dead. You never know when it's your time. You can run. You can hide. You can take all the medicine you want. You can be a vegan. You can believe in Allah. You can believe in Jesus. Whatever the hell, you are not going to be death. That's a guarantee. All of these younger people making mockery of old age. And you might not make it. Making mockery of old age and there are young people who paralyze. There are young people who can't walk. There are young people with autism. There are young people with cancer. Your youth don't mean nothing in the grand scheme of things because you can die or you can be so sick you wish you was dead. The suicide rate of young people in this country is at a high never seen before. But you young, you tough. You better than older folks. Nobody with some age can tell you nothing. You a know-it-all. And look at our community with all these young know-it-alls. Uh, our elders have failed us, which they have. We're going to talk about that. Which, not all the elders, some of them have failed.
failed you. That's what we want to talk about. But you will know it all. I've heard younger people talk about they smarter than Malcolm, which I have done that, but I'm coming from a whole different point. They have thousands listening to their garbage. You smarter than Malcolm. You smarter than Malcolm. You make mockery of Rosa Parks. You make mockery of Fatty Lou Hamer. You make mockery of Huey P. Newton, the Black Panthers. What have you produced, young man? They have not produced anything except a YouTube video. And if it wasn't for the white man, you wouldn't even have a YouTube video. Pitiful ass. Life is not guaranteed to nobody. So when you make it mockery of older people, you are a fool because there's no guarantee you going to make it. I already been there. I already been 25. I already been 35. I already been 45. I already been there. Here's a young man full of promise. Ain't nobody thinking about death. I can guarantee you, here, this young man with this bright future, getting ready to go into the NFL. Ain't nobody thinking about death. And all of a sudden, it's all taken away. Because nobody knows the time. Nobody knows. And when you wish death on somebody, you're probably digging a grave for yourself. Because the one, unless you are like the United States government, you run around assassinating folks, or you on death row some, nobody knows the time. Those who wish death upon me, I probably will see them going to the grave. I will hear about them. Oh, don't you know, they died a few years ago, man. What? That's the same cats that took, that wanted me dead long. They gone. We don't know. We don't know when it's our time. And it's really immature and it's silly. To wish, to wish, to wish death on folks. And to make mockery of older people because they already been there. There's no guarantee you're going to make it. I'm still in the same position because there's older people than I am. And I want to make it as long as I have my health. I don't want to be sickly. I want to be able to make it where they already have gone. And maybe that's the reason why. As they say, the karma, as they say, the universe. Maybe that's the reason why you have not been blessed as a people with better. Because you don't appreciate nothing. And you have not earned nothing. And you getting exactly what you deserve. If it was not for those people prior to this young man that just passed. What's his name? Kyrie Jackson, I believe that's his name. There were people before Kyrie Jackson that helped open the door so he could become a multi-million dollar football player. You don't give a damn about them. Don't talk about them. It's all about me, but without them, you wouldn't have all these opportunities that you have today. Because somebody, an old geezer prior to you, they sacrificed themselves. They went through the hell. So your walk wouldn't be so tough and you have no appreciation. You think it's all about you. They opened the door. And I can guarantee you, if you was put in their position, 
You too damn weak to open any doors because you ain't opened no damn doors in the last 50, 60 damn years. You ain't opened no doors. It take a hell of a person to open these doors. A lot of you have big mouths and you talk a big game, but when it comes to really stepping up, your ass ain't going to do nothing. You have YouTube, you have social media. Our ancestors did not have YouTube. They didn't have social media. Things much better and easier for you and you cannot even replicate what they done. That shows us we are misfits. I know you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear reality. You don't want to hear the real truth. Go to the Nation of Islam. Go to the, uh, what's his name, Tahaka Bay channel. And they can kiss your ass. And you can go to uh, uh, wherever, Sinetta TV. They will tell you you're a great, a, a king and a, a warrior and all these old. You a warrior? Who the hell did you fight? You a god, where your power? You a king, where your kingdom at? You a queen, where your kingdom? You're in your kingdom at. You have absolutely nothing. You gotta wait on the white man to give you a football contract. You don't have nothing. You don't have no football league. You have no baseball leagues. You have nothing of substance that you built with your own hand, Mr. God. Here's a man, Dr. Umar Johnson, been building a damn school for the last 20 damn years. Real close. That's the best you can do. Who gonna, in their right mind going to wait on a school for 20 years? Who is going to do that? It goes to show you And all this coddling people kissing your little toe. Everything going to be all right. That's cool to a certain point. But you got to get real. You can't keep coddling folks. Because they become comfortable in their condition. And that's what has happened to us. We're satisfied with the crumbs. And the little. Diddly dally. That we got from out of the civil rights movement. Because. This young man can get a football crowd. We've made it. Because now you got a white woman on your arms. We moved all up. To the west side, I finally got a piece of the pie. So the Jeffersons move into this building that they did not build. And they paying the white man rent. How the hell are you moving all up, moving into another man's building and you got to pay him rent, George Jefferson? I got to get my piece of the pie. No, you getting some crumbs. There's a difference between a piece of the pie and some damn crumbs. And when you look at this pie, the only thing, the so-called Negro, I don't give a damn if you Beyonce and Jay-Z or Kanye or Obama, whoever Nick, big shot Negro you think you are, the only thing you got is some damn crumbs. We should be in a position to get a piece of the pie. And we are in a position to get a piece of the pie. And from that piece, I'm going to bake my own damn pie. I don't want yours no more. I just need a piece of your pie to get started. Because I'm going to bake and do my own, bake my own pie. I don't want a piece of Somebody else damn pot.
Poor, we all gonna leave this earth. But I wish this young man was able to see himself and his and the people that him that he's born from in a different position. And he could actually help put us in a better position. But they don't have that mentality because they're comfortable with some damn crumbs. And making it, make it excuses for not having nothing. So I come on here for these few minutes because I would be considered a baby boomer and the generation after myself I guess that would probably be like our children they would be generation X myself see so I would be the child of Dr. King I would be Malcolm X son I would be Fannie Lou Hamer son I would be Huey P. Newton son we are their children. We are their generation. The ones, the ones that came up within the civil rights movement. We were just being born. And so, as time goes on, the baton is supposed to be passed on to us. So now it's our turn. They did the best they could. We learned from what their struggle. We learned from their success. We learned from their failure. And now it's our turn. So we begin to turn 18, 19, and 20 in the early 80s. We're, we're adults. Now, since we're adults, it's time for us to accept responsibility. Dr. King and Malcolm was young men. All of them was young men. They sacrificed their youth in this fight. Huey P. Newton and those brothers was college students. They could have just went to college and been done with. Get them a degree and have, and have a family and and get a piece of the pie and all that other nonsense. But they sacrificed and they died so you can live and be better. And I am their child. I am their of their children. Now the baton has been passed to the baby boomer generation. That's me. So what has the baby boomer generation what has it done quite honestly they didn't know what to do they joined the old geezers it's the they call it the uh, traditionalist generation Louis Farrakhan Jesse Jackson and all those guys they influenced us and we became part of them. We didn't have no idea. We didn't know what to do. So we joined Farrakhan and, and we, we, we uh, remade the, the Black Panther Party. We brought back the Moore Science Temple. We brought back the UNIA. I don't think that's all, that's all we knew. We didn't learn a damn thing from what our ancestors done. So when you copying the ancestors and what they done, you can only produce what they produce. And the sad thing about it is you can't even replicate what they done. That's how pitiful you are. There has been no new strategy, no new mindset to cause progress. Still marching, still singing, still generational wealth and economics and all this other stuff that you've been hollering all the time. Same stuff. 
You have moved not one iota from the civil rights movement. And what make me really, really shame, my generation ain't did a damn thing. Totally dropped the baton. The only thing my generation try to be the, the new Martin Luther King, the new Malcolm, the new Farrakhan. That's the only thing they, they could do. But they didn't know any better. So you can, we cannot fault people when they don't know any better. They just do what they, all they know. They don't know. And then you have Generation X. Another, another pitiful generation who ain't learned a damn thing. So you got baby boomers and their children, Generation X, ain't did a damn thing in 50 years. And then get angry when people tell you you ain't did a damn thing. They tell you about something like, oh, what about the Million Man March? That produced nothing. What about the Malcolm X movie? They ain't produce, what, what do that, how did that benefit you? We dropped the ball. Because you are happy and got comfortable with the crumb from the pie, not a piece of the pie. You call it a piece, it's a crumb. And you're still happy with crumbs. Here we are. We should control something. Just like you, you, you a hater. You hate on the Koreans and the Asians for taking control of, of the hair industry, weaves and whatever, blah, blah, blah. That ain't you nothing but a hater. They found something, they found their customers, they found something they was good at, and they took control of it. Like I'm asking us, take control of a state. Take control of, even if it's, if it's baking cookies, we gonna be the best cookie makers in the world. Just like, what's the name? Uh, the Swiss, I believe it's the Swiss. They're known for their chocolate. We should be known for something. What are we known for? We're known for being the clowns of humanity. Getting drunk. Twerking, the only thing we know how to sing and dance, grab ball, run up and down the court with, with a here you are, man, and you happy to have a ball in your hand and you go up and down. Look what I can do with this ball. I'm playing with another man's ball because the ball ain't belong to you, the ball belongs to the white man, and he pay you money to play with his ball. That don't sound so good, do it? <laughs> that sound gay as hell, do it. <laughs> The way you saying it, man, that ain't right. Uh, that's you playing with another man's balls. Cause that's the reality. That's not your ball. You don't even make the basketball. You don't make the rim. You don't put down no court. You don't do all thing you do is play with the balls. And they give you a million dollars. Here, come here, come here, boy. I got two million dollars here. Come over here, boy, and play with my balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one. <laughs> Woo! Uh, that sounds gay, don't it? <laughs> and you feel like a big shot because you can vote. <laughs> you can vote. I'm gonna vote for Donald Trump. You got a bunch of Negroes on here. They they Trumpaholic. They on another man's ball. Hold on a second. Let me put on some light. Let me see if I can lighten this up.
<laughs> hey, hey. Oh, that didn't help none at all. Oh, well. Oh, well, we'll work with what I got. Oh, anyway. <laughs> you play football, you play basketball, you play soccer. Y'all love to play with ball. And now you're on another man's ball. Donald Trump. On, on his ball. I ain't gonna be no no uh, Democrat no more. I'm gonna get on get get on some new balls <laughs> till, until I get the blue balls. <laughs> and the sad thing about it, you when you hear them talk, they really they really think they talking some big time stuff, intelligent hasidity stuff. You own somebody ball, how how intelligent can you be? With a mouth full of balls? <laughs> they, you own Donald Trump ball. Oh, not not even young balls, some old balls. <laughs> 78 years old, 82 years old, like God dang. <laughs> Their ball. <laughs> Woo! Wow. We love playing with ball. So I'm shame of my generation. I'm shame of our children that we produce. We drop the ball. <laughs> the baton. <laughs> We dropped the baton. <laughs> we dropped the baton. And the next generations, Generation Z and all this other crap, they ain't no damn different. Caught up in this Disneyland fairy tale life. Because you think you like everybody else. Until you get a reality check. Then you feel, you feel and look stupid. Because you're just here. You're here for the entertainment. You're here for, they don't mind giving you some booty. They don't mind watching you play with balls and sing and dance. They don't mind you on your YouTube channel. Black Power Family and uh, Hotel. I say they don't care about all that stuff. They don't care. The whole attitude will change when they actually see that you want a piece of the pie. Everybody's, everybody's attitude toward you going to change when they see that you are really after the pie. They don't mind. I'm going to do a Dr. Umar. They don't mind. They, they don't mind. They don't mind a few, a few Negroes having a few dollars, having a little bit of this. They don't mind. But you talking about trying to bring all these Negroes? Oh, no, 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 no. No. They're not going to tolerate that. Their whole attitude, they won't even be able to hold back. I'm telling you. If we just talked, we as a people, if we just talked about taking control of a state, watch their attitude. All thing we got to do is talk about it. Watch that. Watch people's attitude. You'll see the real them come out. But see, it's all up to you because see, give them their crap back. Be satisfied with your lead. If you want to want to watch basketball, just concentrate on yours. If you can't produce it, you don't need it. This is the mindset that you have to see. We talk, but we have to produce. 
And we have to understand, you have to get the folks to understand that's the only way we are going to be respected as a man and a woman. I don't care what you get in your life, how successful you think that you are. The right person will tell you who and what you really are. The N-word. But see, the thing about it, you can be the N-word. But I got power now. What you got to say about that? I got the power to put your ass in jail for the rest of your life. This N-word. It's a different ball game today. It's a different reality today. Because this N-word can take your house away from you. This N-word don't have to bring electricity to your house. Keep running your mouth. Two generations. We should already be in that position. Because the civil rights movement should have been able to evolve and progress. But it didn't. We started going backwards and got stuck. And the only thing that you hear from these silly folks, what we used to do. You ain't did a damn thing. You wasn't there talking what we, we used to do. They keep talking about how the family was. You ain't part of that. What you talking about? You didn't live that. You don't know the reality of that. It's dead and gone. When somebody died, you can make them or when, when a time period has left, like they do ancient Egypt. They try to paint ancient Egypt like they was holy and righteous and loving. Everything was beautiful. That's a damn lie. Even according to the hieroglyphics. They pick and choose the hieroglyphics that they want to use. Those people was not holy and righteous and beautiful and a perfect world. That's a damn lie. Just like the Bible. The Bible is violent. The Quran is violent. They pick and choose different things and they spin this narrative. And that's not the reality of it. Because God is violent. God is not peace loving. A very violent individual being. There's nothing loving and peaceful about God. How the hell you going to ask somebody to show their loyalty to you? I want you to kill your son. To show your loyalty to me, I'm going to kill your family out. You got to start all over from scratch with nothing to show your loyalty. To the, what, what, what kind of crap is that? What is your problem, bro? This God is narcissistic. Grandiose. If you want to talk about insanity, this God is in purely insane. I'm ashamed of the baby boomer generation. I'm ashamed of Generation X. Because of a few crumbs that a few people got. We dropped the ball. I don't expect Dr. King's children to be like him. But they didn't do nothing no more than what he was able to. Matter of fact, they wasn't haven't been able to replicate what their own father done. They opened a building of, of history and give a few speeches. And then the, the, the men, I thought the man was the leader. Dexter and Martin Luther King, Junior the Third, really wasn't active like that. The one really leading the charge was, was uh, Bernice. Still trying to, you know, lead the charge, but she's basically nothing but a preacher. 
The children of Malcolm ain't, ain't did nothing. The children of Elijah Muhammad, the children of Farrakhan only following behind his happy ass. They ain't been able to do nothing either. But see, as you get older, you're supposed to be able to come into your own. And you look at your father and you look at our ancestors. You see what they've done that was successful and you see what they've done that was a failure. And you begin to come into your own instead of being a copy of them. Who the hell did they copy? You have to come into your own. Because you got to bring yourself. You got to bring something new to the struggle. And so we sitting right here. Actually in reality in a worse condition. Because we believe. We believe that. We have accomplished something. comfortable in this cesspool you know in science they say that your that your senses can adjust to different smells and you'll get used to it well I guess that's true uh, I guess that's true because you can go to some people's houses and they stink but the people living in that filth, it don't bother them none. They used to the stink. The baby diapers they don't take out. The dog they don't take out. The dog done took dumps all over the house in urine. And the parakeet flying around pissing on people's heads. <laughs> they don't smell that filth. And that's how we are. We are in this cesspool. And we just skinning and grinning. I'm looking at Beyonce and Jay-Z. I'm looking at In Vogue. <laughs> I can say that Terry not behind me today. <laughs> we comfortable in this mess. Because that's all we know. We don't know any better. We like children. You know how a baby would take a dump on itself until it get really until it get really really bad. The child don't give a damn. Got doo doo coming all out the diaper. Child don't give a damn. They ain't tripping off of it. That's how we are. The child not tripping off until it get really really bad. And that's how we are. We don't get serious about nothing. Until it get really, really, really bad. There's no argument. It is what it is, for real. There's no debate. That's the only time we get serious about anything. Then we cry and we want people to feel sorry for us and all this other nonsense. Here we are in a time our ancestors wish they could be in. In a time where their sacrifice and their blood and their tears a certain few. I want to make that clear. Because all the ancestors, y'all keep talking about the ancestors this, all the ancestors didn't help you walk this easier life. A few handful. I can guarantee you the majority of us cannot tell nobody about their relatives that was in the fight in the 60s or prior. They didn't participate. Just like the majority of us not going to participate in nothing. But we don't mind benefiting. I don't see how you can sleep at night. Because I know I can't. As soon as I, be, as soon as I began
began to understand I was a little boy and I was ready to jump into the fight. My mama didn't jump in the fight. My sisters didn't jump in the fight. My uncles, grandparents, they didn't jump in the fight. But all of them benefit from other people bleeding and dying and sacrificing. That's why I say I'm not going to do that. Because you're not worth it. And I don't care. You can, you can praise me and you can give me money or whatever. I'm not going to do that because you don't because the only thing you're going to do I'll just be another uh, another cult figure to worship. Or uh, just another preacher somebody on YouTube to listen to but you ain't going to do a damn thing. You're not going to act and do nothing. The only thing you're going to do is say that's right Tyler. That's right snap nut. Tell him tell him snap snap. Tell him that. That's the only thing your ass gonna do. Then you turn around with your happy ass. I wonder why things don't change. Don't worry about nobody else. Long as you make your move. Dr. King, Huey P. Newton, Malcolm, Fannie Lou Hamer, Sojourner Truth, they wouldn't care about what other people done, what other people doing. What other folks think. Here we are, Generation X. Here we are, the baby boomers. You have an opportunity to be the greatest generations ever and solve this problem once and for all. Everything is going your way. But you don't know how to take advantage of nothing. Because you think, because you're still living in 1960. Which you never lived. 1950, 5000 BC. You never lived those times. You know all about 5000 BC and don't know a damn thing about 2024. One of the things that's getting ready to hit big right now is this solar stuff. A lot of the states want to stop fossil fuel and get on board and get on board the the solar, start turning solar. We should be part of that because we're going to be using it. It's going to be a trillion dollar industry. We don't, we're not thinking. We don't think at all. Let me see, let me give somebody some attention because they make a good point. You talk good. Yes, I talk good because your happy ass won't help me do a damn thing. You're right. I talk good. I don't think I can do is talk. Because you ain't going to help do a damn thing. Yeah, I talk good. But you refuse to accept the FBA B1 move. Moving to do what? It's thousands of FBA B1. It's thousands. What have they done? Answer the question. It's thousands. I'm Angel Snubbin Up 7. I'm by myself on a YouTube channel. It's thousands of you B1. It's thousands of you FBA. I'm a, I'm a foundation of black America. And you have produced what? The only thing you have done is send Tariq Nasheed and his family to uh to uh, Cancun, somewhere in Brazil, where he bragged about, even though he has a wife, he bragging about looking at the women with this with this string between their ass. 
That's the only thing you have produced. That's the only thing you have done. Since you can write so good in the chat room, put in the accomplishments of FBA and B1. It's thousands of y'all. You can't even get together to do nothing. The only thing you can do is get together is give Tariq Masheed more money than he needs for his videos, his DVDs. That's the only thing that you can produce. And his museum, his so-called museum, that look like a damn nightclub. They have made reparations. We've been talking about reparations before Tariq Nasheed was born. We've been talking about reparations right off the slave plantation. What you talking about? We talk about reparations. So what? There's people. Why don't you help the people that's already been fighting for, just, for reparations for 50 damn years? No. You too selfish. You think you know it all. You think you can do more than they, those people that have been fighting for reparations way long before Tariq Nasheed, before Yvette Carvel, whatever their name is, and Tonto, before they was even born. These people been to court. They've been to court suing drug companies and, and other businesses and the government over reparations. Tariq Nasheed ain't never been to court with nobody. Except, what's his name? Uh, the flip-flopper, that, that raggedy guy. What's his name? Morristown World. What's, what, is, what is that? Tahaka, baby. <laughs> California didn't, was doing what they doing. It had nothing to do with Tariq Nasheed. Don't have nothing to do with Yvette Cornell. None of it. You way behind. You don't even know your own history. You know the history of the Moors. You know the history of Kemet. But you don't even know your own history as a foundation of black America. It's already been going on. It ain't going nothing. You keep talking about it wasn't going nowhere. It's still not going nowhere. It's thousands of you. So if it's going somewhere with you, where has it gone? Except a speech. Except a speech at the at, at Washington D.C. The same kind of speeches Dr. King gave fifty some years ago. Sir, don't act like you can't see how reparations talk. It, uh, no, I can't see. No, I can't see. Show it to us. Make a video. Show it to us. No, I can't see. You're absolutely right. I cannot. I can't see something that don't exist. No, I can't see nothing that don't exist. You can easily shut me up. Yeah, things take time, sir. Absolutely. Things take time. I know. Another hundred years. I know. Another hundred years. Yeah, I know things take time. Things take time when you don't know what the hell that you're doing. You you don't you won't let no plumber, you're not gonna let no car or uh, auto mechanic, you're gonna let nobody, you're not gonna let your boss at work talk about when you looking for your paycheck, talk about, well, you know things take time. When you need your kitchen sink done, or oh, well, you know things take time. People do that because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Or they're trying to steal. I'm not going to check out anything. You bring it. You can come here and bring it. I will set up I will set up a live stream and you can bring all that stuff here and to show the nothing that you're talking about. That's nothing but church. The only thing you're doing is getting the Holy Ghost. Nothing but a bunch of talk. That's all you satisfied with. You're not satisfied. I must have substance. I must produce. You don't just, oh, you care. All thing you care about is talking. It takes time because you don't know what the hell you're doing. You don't know nothing about them. You don't know nothing about nothing. You should be helping the ones that's already been doing it for 50, 60 years. And Tariq Nasheed 
stole the idea of what he doing from Yvette Carnell and Tone Talks. Tone Talks or whatever. All you doing is being negative. I'm being negative because I'm telling the truth. Show me the positive. What is being negative by telling you exactly what don't exist? I've been hearing that stuff. Is a movement built overnight? I heard that stuff when I was a little boy. The same garbage. So where is it? All this stuff they told me. All this stuff that you're talking about. They told me all this when I was a little when I was a little boy. The same stuff. Cause y'all don't know what you're doing. You have no idea of what you're doing. It's nothing but a church. That's all you got is a church. The Tariq Nasheed, Yvette Carnell Church. That's all you got. You don't know what you're doing. The only thing you have is a bunch of talk. And most folks, like they've been following Louis Farrakhan, that's all he ever done is talk. And y'all satisfied with talk. You don't hold your people accountable. If they say they can produce and do, then you, they supposed to produce, they supposed to do it. Tariq Nasheed don't know nothing about the struggle. Tariq Nasheed is just some guy that found a hustle. Tariq Nasheed has not even been in the struggle at all. He found a hustle and got good at it because he knows the only thing y'all are are church goers. to answer those questions. Y'all can you can play the dumb role all you want to. You've been around Angel Snuffin Up 7 for years. I don't have to answer those questions. And if I do, bring your happy ass live and tell me in my face. No, you don't want get you don't want none of this work. You don't want to deal with questions live. And bring your and bring your evidence live. I know Tariq Nasheed is not the leader. Because he said he wasn't a leader. But he is the leader. How you gonna how we gonna run something and don't have a leader? That's stupid. Somebody gonna be leader whether they like it or not. That's a stupid, that's illogical. That's illogical. Somebody's going to be a leader. Somebody's going to have to, somebody have to move forward. Somebody, he's the voice that y'all are following. So he's the leader, whether he likes it or not. Anytime. I want to go live. We can go live right now. I set it up on the other channel. We can do it right now. You bring that nonsense here. We can do it right now. I shut this down and start all over again. And you come here and you explain to us how to read the sheet and this modern move, how you making your move. And you bring your evidence. How much, how much time that you need in order to prepare yourself? You need an hour, two hours? You want to wait till midnight? Exactly. Let's get it. Don't talk it. Let's do it. Get your, if you bring here, come here and explain all this stuff to us. I don't have to tell you nothing. You gonna come here and tell us how you got y'all got it going on the FBA B1 movement, which what you got going on. I, Cause I wanna question you. I wanna see your information. I wanna see what you have produced. Except talk. 
And it's thousands. It's thousands of you. The only thing you produce is talk. A museum, nightclub, what is it? A, a, a museum. No, now you punking out. See, this is how they do it. Didn't he? He just said, okay, let's get it. Now he said, we could do it another time, bro. <laughs> they you punking out. <laughs> See? <laughs> Cause look, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. And I won't even open up my mouth. I sit back in the cut and let you show all the things that you said. I want you to sit back. I won't even open up my mouth till, till you are absolutely done. Because I don't mind being wrong. I can, I can easily say, hey, I was wrong. Y'all got it going on. How can I help you? That's what I would do. How can I get on board y'all train? That's the way to go. I have no problem with that. Because maybe I need to shut my mouth and just sit back in the cut and listen. And that's what I would do while you explain all this. Because I'm not prejudiced, I'm not biased, and I don't hate on nobody. But from what I see, from my, from my over 40 some years experience, you're not getting the job done. We should be in a much better place. But we're not. Seriously, I would need to prepare and I don't have the time to do it right now. See, the thing about it is you're always supposed to be prepared just like the Jacksons, just like Beyonce and Destiny's Child. You're always supposed to be ready to sing. A soldier always supposed to be ready to pull that trigger. What you need to prepare for? You're always supposed to be ready to go. What you preparing for? Exactly, nothing but excuses. I would just tell you to listen to listen to the new black media. When when the new black media listen to Angel Snubbin Up Seven, that's when I will listen to the new black media. I'm not interested in none of these damn folks. They don't listen to me. There's no reason for me to listen to they ain't talking nothing I have not already heard. I've been around this stuff over 40 years. What they gonna tell me? Exactly, Coon, whatever your Coon ass is. Coon said, no need to prepare. You should stay ready. That's, you should always be ready. Ready to roll. And whatever paperwork you need, I'll take your word for it. We'll look it up later if you, if you need paperwork. You sounding ignorant right now. Yeah, I am ignorant. Ignorant only means I don't know. And I don't know that you are successful. I don't know you know what the hell you talking about. Yes, I am ignorant. You're absolutely right. Because that's all ignorant means is lack of knowledge. I don't know. Yes, you are absolutely right. I don't know. So come and bring your ass now because you should be ready because I should, I should be ready. Look, People be trying to get me early in the morning. I'm half asleep. I set up the live stream. I'm, I gotta be ready whenever these folks is ready. Hell, I had a live stream what like six, seven o'clock in the morning and, and whenever these folks think they wanna bring some stuff, come on. I got to get ready. When I was driving the truck, I had to drive one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, I had to be ready. And you have a negative attitude. What's negative? What's negative? Because I said I don't believe you. Unless you show me. That's a negative attitude. I've been around this stuff. Before, before you was born. Before.
before Tariq Nasheed was born. I was out here doing my thing and y'all was sucking on your mama's breast, sucking on a Similac or whatever, Infamil. What you gonna tell me? And I'm not these other old geezers. I have learned from my experience. The only thing you're doing is copying. The reparations movement of it's old. The only thing you're doing is copying what somebody else already have done for the last 50, 100 years. You ain't bringing nothing new. You ain't saying nothing new. You know what we up against. Yes, I want instant result. You damn skipping. We are too far behind in the struggle. We need something big. We need something now. We can't be waiting. We already been waiting for 50 years. You don't know what you're doing. You talking, but you really don't know what you're doing. I hear these people talk. It's nothing I have not heard within the 40, over 40 years I've been around this stuff. There's nothing new. That's why I said when I come to YouTube, I want to be different. I don't want to be like everybody else. Hell, if I wanted to be like everybody else, I could just I can, I can copy people too. Yeah, reparations is about something big, something that you beg for and you ain't gonna get. What's his name? What's that guy? What's his name and them other Democrats? They already told these Negroes, we're not interested. How long has that, what's it called, that bill? They still, what is that bill for reparations? And the brother that started, he's dead now. Look how long it's been on the table. They're not interested. It's not going to get passed. See, the Mississippi campaign, you put yourself in a position, you're going to get reparations whether they like it or not. You're going to be slick about yours. You're going to do yours. Your strategy is a, is a way where they have no defense. They can't, they can't do nothing about it. It is begging. How you gonna demand something? Yeah, John Conyers, uh, HR 40, that's what, what it is. You are begging. How you gonna make a demand? You don't have no power. You have no influence. You can't even do a boycott. You can't even do a boycott. The last boycott they tried, I believe it was Let's, let's boycott Christmas. Didn't work. These niggas are going to celebrate Christmas. And see, for me, I don't care about Christmas anyway. So I can support a boycott of Christmas, but these, these folks, they're not going to, they love Christmas. Wrong holiday, bro. You can't even get these folks to boycott nothing. What power you got? What power do you have? Except for YouTube video. And the people that run YouTube can shut Tariq Nasheed down today if they want to. And I believe they did shut him down one time. And Facebook can shut you down. What power you got? You can't even, you, Tariq Nasheed cannot even develop his own website. Y'all won't even support his own website. No, I can't see how things are moving. Because I don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the same stuff they said in church. Don't you see? No, I don't see. 
The power of the Holy Ghost. No, I don't see that. No, I don't. And this is what I mean. These are people are losers. Like my generations are losers. Generation X is losers and the ones behind because you're not doing nothing. Those children doing nothing no better. Same stuff. Copying. Copying. No original. The original man. No originality. No vision. Just doing the same stuff. Redundant stuff over and over again. That's my problem. Is because I want something new. I got a problem because I want something new. I got a problem because I see that, that the old is not working. So I got to try something new. Now you see that what Tariq Nasheed and Yvette Connor, you see that's not working. Now it's time to try something new. But no, you, this is how dumb we are. Like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. That's what y'all do. It's going to work one day. One day, this square peg is going to go in this round hole. It's going to work one day. Look dumb as hell. It's never going to work. It's like when you're driving your car and this is blocked, then you have to go around and find a different path to get where you're going. But you don't. Y'all want to ram, try to ram the, the blockade and try to go through and force yourself. That's not the way to go. There's a reason why you can't go down that road. This is not the same thing. What we doing with reparations has never been done. What, what are you doing? That ain't never been done before. He still have not said what is he doing that has not been done before. Don't you see black people leaving the... What they got to do anything? You have political power or political privilege and you don't know what the hell to do with it. You don't know what you're doing. Y'all just... You don't know what the hell you're doing. It's just a church. Stuff that sound good and and you, and you like Tariq Nasheed, he don't say nothing wrong. You like Yvette Carnell, whatever. It's just a church to go to. And you go there and get the Holy Ghost. Don't have nothing to do with what y'all doing. California already, not only California, a lot, a lot of small cities have been talking about reparations way before to ring the she and Yvette Carnell. You ain't, that ain't, that's not nothing new. That ain't nothing new. It has happened before. Go do a Google search. I don't have to argue with you. Do a Google search about cities and towns that's already have been talking about reparations. I don't have to argue and debate with you. You can do a Google search and find that out. Way before, they don't even know, a lot of these people don't even know who Tariq Nasheed is. They don't know who Yvette Carnell, these YouTube folks, they don't even know who the hell y'all are. They've been talking about this stuff for years. The only reason why they want reparations is like winning the lottery. They want instant money. Has nothing to do with actually repairing the people. Well, I'm done with this conversation because this, this man ain't talking nothing. He's just running some stuff. It's just, it's just like talking to people about religion or whatever. Just talking some stuff. Uh, Brother Talib in the house. He said, folks have no morals or principles to stand on any code. That's why nobody respects soul people. Pay attention. It's gotten worse for our generations since since COVID, since George Floyd. It's all about the bad. And that's what they would tell you, even Tariq. I'm getting paid. Tariq Nasheed always talk about, oh, you a broke Negro. 
you a broke Negro. Because it's all about getting paid. Because you want to live like and be like the white man. That's what it's about. That's why you want reparation. Because you want to be like the white folk. You want to be like the, the oppressor. And that's what it's all about. Materialistic. You're not really looking at reparation is supposed to be about how to repair a people. Not to put money into Rick Nasheed pocket or some individual's pocket. It's about how do we prepare ourselves because we have been damaged going on 500 years. How can we repair the people? Giving the people money so they can buy Cadillacs and mansions is not repairing the people. It is about that. Repairing the people is not teaching them that they are some damn African or they some damn Aboriginals or whatever this other blackity black stuff that they got floating around here. He does not know. They don't know what they are doing. You don't know what you're doing. What is the program? Send the program to me in my email. I want to see what their pro the program is supposed to be. The talk. The talk. But the, but the thousands of people can't produce nothing further out of the program. Except make a speech in Washington, D.C. Dr. King done that 50 years ago. And Louis Farrakhan done that in 1995. What are you going to do different than Dr. King and Louis Farrakhan and those who have already gone before us? You ain't doing nothing different. So you're going to get the same results. You're going to get the same results. And that's a fallacy. I talk about repair all the time. We, we teach. Teach me we believe. We believe we are the foundation of this nation. If all the black people left this country, it wouldn't skip a beat. You believe that they need you. That's a damn lie. They don't need you. Go ahead and go. They're not even stopping you. You're not no foundation of this nation. You're a slave. Always been a slave. You don't run nothing. You don't control nothing. What are you the foundation of? The foundation of being a damn clown. You ain't no foundation. You ain't nothing but a church goer. You don't run nothing. You don't control nothing. You don't have no power. What are you the foundation of? Except for being a slave. Being something that somebody can use. That's your only foundation. Somebody use you. You don't have no power. You don't have nothing. How you gonna repair somebody and don't have nothing? That's why the Mississippi campaign is important. Because you have substance. If you are as smart, as intelligent that you claim that you are, and your people can come to the state of Mississippi and see how you got it going on, that gives them pride. I want to be part of that. I want my state. Can we develop a state? Can we get Georgia? Can we get Alabama? That's real. That's real. You need to have substance. And when you take control of a state, a state voice carries more weight than Tariq Nasheed and all this little diddly dally stuff. Going to one poor state is not a good idea. You don't know the Mississippi campaign. You don't know nothing about it. You ain't heard nothing that I said. So 
So you can't question me. You don't know nothing about the Mississippi campaign. The only thing you're doing is tripping off the fact that the word Mississippi was said, and I'm not talking about that blackity black garbage. And it's never been done before. And it can be done. And you will get real power. All the people will benefit, not just Tariq Nasheed, not just a few. All the power. Everybody. Because everybody will participate. Again. He don't know nothing about the Mississippi campaign. You have no idea. You can't comprehend. You can't comprehend because your mind filled up with all that baloney from 1930, 1960 some damn where. All that religious garbage. So I cannot. So you the one ignorant. And ignorant means I don't know. And you don't want to know. All the videos I've made about the Mississippi campaign. I even made a video Mississippi campaign for dummies. No, you already got it in your mind. So nobody can tell you nothing. Because to read the sheet is popular. A popular church. So what? Brother Talib says, I use a, meta, a metaphor. Example, these days, black boxers get disrespected in boxing while... Hold up a second. Brother Talib says, I use a metaphor for an example these days. Damn, I <laughs> keep, keep jumping. I can't read it. Black boxers get disrespected in the boxing while so black. Okay. I don't know why this thing keep jumping like that. I use a metaphor, for example, these days black boxers get disrespected in the box. Ah, I can't read it. <laughs> Sorry, Brother Talib, I can't read it. <laughs> Let me see if I can read it real quick. And I, let's see, what the racist hit my name, Ryan. I don't know exactly what you're trying to say. I can't read it. But, uh, again, we asked, we asked this fella, all this tappity tap stuff in the chat room you tell her I don't have the time why are you still here you up you pumpkin out you say you don't have the time but you still here putting all this baloney in my chat room promoting promoting Tariq Nasheed and that FBI bring bring a, rep a representative Bring a representative of their of theirs, because you're not a representative. Bring an official representative here so they can talk and we can question them. You got time. You got time to listen, but you're writing bull crap in the chat room. That's not listening. If you have time to do what you're doing, I'll shut this down. Bring your happy ass. To, to the live stream and show us your way is the way. I will be happy anytime. If Tariq Nasheed told me to come to his live stream right now, I'll be right there. Ready or not, here I come. And y'all know how I do it. I'll be in pajamas. I'll be, it don't make no difference. I'm coming. I'm, I got to do this. You a punk, you punking out. How you gonna tell me that your way is better and you can't even deal with words? You punking out. You have some, look, I got confidence in mine. You know, you, that's because you're not confident in what you're talking about. I told you, like everybody else, you can come here and I won't say nothing. And you say and talk as long as you I, look. I got all night. You can say whatever you want. 
I won't say nothing. I dare Tariq Nasheed. I dare the Nation of Islam. I dare Tahaka Bay. So I, never, I dare them to give me that kind of time. Because whether they, the audience like it or not, I'm going to bring the heat and a damn thing they're going to be able to say when I'm finished. Nothing. I guarantee. The only thing they can do is get upset and complain like you. You gonna tell me about the Mississippi campaign and don't know nothing about it. I have listened to Tariq Nasheed. I've listened to Yvette Carnell. I know what they're talking about. It's producing nothing. The same old, same old. And if I went to their chat room, the only thing they're going to do is kick me out. That's the only thing they ever do. Because they're a bunch of punks and suckers too, just like Coon said. I don't have to see nothing. I don't have to see, I don't have to, I don't have to see nothing until you show it to them. I don't have to believe in an apple. But if an apple is there, I have no choice. I have to, it, it is there. I have to acknowledge it. You have nothing to show. I still couldn't see it till, I still couldn't see it till, because you got this, you got this guy that pumped out, keep writing all this garbage, keep making the, the stuff, the, uh, the chat move up. I can't see it. Okay, let me see. Uh, I made the point by saying in life, that's how low soul people have gone. Oh, yeah. Keep telling me about some stuff overnight. It's thousands of you. If those people that really claim they support Omar Johnson, if they really went in their pockets, and sacrifice for that school, it should have been built a long time ago. They have, they have the money. They really don't believe in it. They, you can ask Dr. Umar. These, you know, they're just sending here some chump change, a little bit, a few dimes here and a few dimes. Look, if, if the people that follow or claim that they follow Umar Johnson, if they sent $10 a month, he should have had that school done a long time ago. And be consistent with the $10. He could have been had that school up. They're not, they're not, he's just a preacher. And that's all we do. We love preachers and talking. I got to wait. I know I don't have to wait. You pumped out and just keep doing what you're doing. And as time goes on, this, this time next year, I'm going to be saying the same thing. And a whole year gone by, I'm going to ask you, what have you produced? And you're going to say nothing. Things take time. That's what you're going to say. That's what you said last year and the year before then. Y'all said the same stuff. Oh, things take time. All this blackity black stuff been on YouTube since at least 2005. What has it produced? It has produced nothing except a bunch of scammers, charlatans, fake ass folks. That's all it has produced. It has produced nothing of substance. It's made some of y'all millionaires. Like uh, Brother Polite and, and Young Pharaoh and some of the, and Tarina. It made y'all millionaires. But the people get nothing. Except talk. This is what I promise you. If you support me, I'm going to produce or set my ass down. I want you to hold me accountable. Snubbing up, you said, well, if we did this and if we did that, we'll get such and such. But we didn't. I'll say, you're you right. 
till I sit my happy ass down. Because you did do this and you did do that. It's just, what can I say? I'm not going to make excuses. I'm not going to tell you things take time. No. You do the work, you're going to get paid. When Friday come, you getting paid. So I damn sure will not work for you or or Tariq Nasheed. Because I, we don't, I don't know if I'm gonna get ever get paid or not. I don't want to move to Mississippi. Mississippi campaign, they said the same stuff over and over, over again. Mississippi campaign never said nothing about moving to Mississippi. They said the same old stuff. Dumb. And that's why you don't want to deal with me in person. Because if you brought that to me in person, you get torn to pieces. Because the Mississippi campaign never said nothing about moving to Mississippi. You never studied, you never listened to what we had to say. You never listened to the proposal, cause your mind, cause I can't tell you a damn thing, even though I'm older than Tariq Nasheed, even though I've been in the game longer than Tariq Nasheed, Tariq Nasheed is some damn criminal that came off the street that found a new hustle. That's what he is. I've been in the struggle since I was a little boy. It ain't no hustle for me. And there's people that I met in the street. Somebody would tell you. I remember him. I talked to him. There was no internet. There was no social media when I was hitting the streets as a young man. Everything was hands on. I couldn't go to a chat room and hide behind an avatar. I'm older. I'm older than Tariq Nasheed. Uh, I think he's uh, he's getting close to fifty. If he's not, if he's not in his early fifty, he's getting close to fifty. I'm older than Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed is a great man. I'm not jealous of nobody. Being popular don't make you right. Adolf Hitler was popular. Was he right? Come on, the cool man. Talk to me. <laughs> cool said Tariq Nasheed is close to 60. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> he could be. I'm not really sure. Just because you popular don't make you right. Adolf Hitler is one of, the, one of the best examples. Adolf Hitler was popular. And he's still popular. Even in death. There's people who still worship Adolf Hitler to this day. Do that make him right? It's a lot of dictators who's popular. It don't make them right. You talk about the Mississippi campaign because you don't like what I have to say because I do know what y'all doing. But you don't know what the Mississippi campaign is about. So you're only making yourself look ignorant, well, foolish. Trying to talk about something you don't know nothing about. Absolutely. You've been, you've been around since we've been talking about the Mississippi campaign all the way back in 2018. And you're talking dumb stuff. No, he wasn't right. You go tell Jewish people what you just said. Don't tell Jewish people that. 
He wasn't right. Exactly, Soul Brother 85. What is the solution? What would it getting reparations? What is that the solution? What is the what is the end game? Okay, you get reparations. Okay, you get the reparations, then what? Plus, you don't even know how you're gonna get it. Are you gonna put personal? What you wanna do? Put uh, individual money in people's pocket? How, how you wanna? What you wanna do? Talib says pro blackly black don't have no concrete answers like for the last 100 years. They don't. They don't know what to do. Just came off the slave plantation. They keep talking about Noah Drew Ali, uh, Marcus Garvey. Our people. Our people just came off the slave plantation. What do they know? They was attracted to all this stuff because it made them feel good. Oh, you are God and you are African and black. It made them feel good. Just like Jesus. That's all it was. Nothing but a church. A new church to go to. Oh, the black man do this and the black and the black and the black. That's all it was. Brother Laurel says, the Mississippi campaign can solve a lot, but do we trust our people to do right? And that's part, that's the key too. I'm glad they don't gravitate towards it because if, because if you don't do it right, if you're not sincere, you're not going to get the results you're supposed to get. So I'm glad you don't mess with it. Because I'd rather do nothing than do something half-ass. I can tell you don't believe in us anymore, Angel. You don't believe in us. How you going to tell me what I believe in? I've been doing, I've been in this struggle since I was a little boy. You can't tell me what I believe in, don't. I'm just bringing the reality of it. I know the situation. I know who I'm dealing with. The Negro. You don't know who you're dealing with. You living in some la-la land. You want the people. You want the people to be what you think they should be. When you should understand, need to understand what you're dealing with. Because they're not going to be what you want them to be. Never. So you got to do, you got to work with what you, what you got. <laughs> Absolutely. And tell them that you pumped out. Tell them that you pumped out. You had an opportunity to come here and represent whatever. And, and you pumped out. Bring, get one of their representatives. I will come to them. You tell the black, new black media, invite me. Let me come and talk to them. They're not going to do none of those things. They're a bunch of punks. And you see what happens every time we come against any of them. Either you're going to bow down to these or you're going to look like a damn fool leaving. And if you notice, they never come back with, the, with that fake brother stuff. If I'm your brother, If I'm your brother, I can deal with our differences. <laughs> Soul Brother said, new black media, what the hell is that? I don't, I don't know what it is either. Is that Tariq Nasheed? I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. What's going on tonight? We almost at 20, 20 uh, viewers. 
I've never had 20 viewers in, in a long, long time since uh, the end of uh, we was going back and forth with them idiots. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. We're going to get out of here. People are slowly people are slowly becoming uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not that type of stuff is not going to satisfy them. Because, because time is going to show the people it, it ain't working. It's nothing but a church. I need substance. Exactly, enlightenment. People begin to see. I mean, even I can even tell on my channel, little by little, I'm getting little by little, more and more subscribers are coming. Even on Rumble, even on my Facebook, little by little, more and more people coming. Because that stuff is not working. It just sound good. And when I was a child, that was good enough for me. Sounding good. When I was 17, 18 years old, that was, that was, that was sufficient for me. But as I began to grow older, all that talkity talking, and we're not producing, I'm like, what's going on here? Because I know we collecting, we collecting millions of dollars, but but I don't see where, where is it going. I can't do this because I'm asking people for donations. I'm asking people to help us, and the only one that was getting help at that time was Louis Farrakhan. I wasn't getting nothing. My temple wasn't getting nothing. My community wasn't getting nothing. I'm like, we're doing all this work, raising all this money. We're not producing anything. And then, when we do do something, they fail. Every little project that they tried to do, they fail. So they are fail, they are fail. And, and, and start a new project. Fail. Nothing but a bunch of failure. I'm, I'm a winner. I can't, I can't get down like that. I like to win. <laughs> Daddy don't play that. He said, you broke us from the fire kind spell. I don't even know who Daddy is. Welcome to the platform, Daddy. Don't play that. <laughs> he, said, he said, I broke us. You know those people... They don't even mess with my videos no more. They, that's that Negro. They don't even come up. When I talk about Firecon or whatever, they don't even come mess with my videos no more. <laughs> All they're going to do is get whooped. How are you going to tell me? I've been around this stuff. Some of these people never even met Louis Firecon. How are you going to tell me about the teaching? I've been around the teachers ever since I was a little boy. Oh, daddy, don't play that. Say so he's been around for six years. Brother uh, Talib said, Talib, they mock civil rights, but that's what's holding us up. That's what I said at the beginning, during the beginning of our talk. Civil rights which happened 50 some years ago. We, we have not added nothing to it. That's what's holding us up. And they want to take that stuff away. They want to take away affirmative action. I don't, did, I don't know, did they? I think they already done it, did they? They want to take away affirmative action. They want to take away the voting rights bill. They say you don't need, y'all, you Negroes don't need that stuff no more. And we have not added nothing to the plate. Baby boomers and Generation X have not added nothing to the plate within the last 50 some years. We should be embarrassed. We should be shamed.
And you should not get all upset. You should say in your mind, the brother right. What can I do? I mean, what can I do to be better? That's the only thing you need to do. Don't make excuses. Well, the the we I'm do this and the you ain't done nothing. Nineteen seventy seven. The nation of Islam is gone. The Black Panthers is gone. Everything is gone. Nineteen seventy seven. All that is completely gone. The only one that we was looking to, because I lived it, I can tell you, the only one they was talking about was Jesse Jackson. And if you go look at some of these old sitcoms and stuff, that's all they talk, they talk about Jesse Jackson and uh, maybe there was another brother, uh, Vernon Jordan. And I think Shirley, Shirley Chills, I think she was still around 1977. That was it. We were some comfortable Negro. The only one our greatest spokesman was Michael Evans on Good Time. And we and we laughed at him. <laughs> Look at Michael, pro blackity black. We was laughing at Michael Evans. That's what we was doing when Good Times came around. It's all a joke. We can laugh. Ha 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 ha. It's all a joke. Something to laugh about. So when we laughed at Michael Evans, we laughing at Dr. King, we laughing at Malcolm, we laughing at Elijah Muhammad, we laughing at Marcus Garvey, we laughing at all our ancestors, because now it's funny. And Michael was a little boy. James was not interested in black nothing. You know Florida wasn't. Thelma was too busy looking cute. And JJ was a clown. This is, that was the reality of 1977, the night early, late 1977. I think uh, Good Times came on the air in 1974, I believe. We was done. Brother Talib says, Clarence Thomas said it was wrong, but he's in the position because of it. Exactly. And See, this is how this is how you deal with people that y'all call coon. Y'all love to use that word. Clarence Thomas is a coon. Uh, what's his name? Stephen E. Bell is a coon. Y'all know all the coon. How do you really deal with a coon? You don't deal with a coon by calling them names. They don't care about your names. Because Clarence Thomas been all over the world living the good life. He don't give a damn because you call him a coon. Got him a white woman. He's on the Supreme Court. He don't give a damn what name you call him. He could care less. Now, see, this is the thing about Clarence Thomas. Now, if Clarence, Th Clarence Thomas knows some big shot people and see, if Clarence Thomas really was interested in your ass, You'll mess around and disappear. Then so and so called Clarence Thomas a coon. They they miss him. You do know that Clarence Thomas is in that position. He can make your ass disappear with your big mouth. And nobody would even give a damn. They like damn so and so missing. Oh well, you keep going, keep running your damn mouth. That's why Snoop Dogg. I'm going to do Umar Johnson. That's why Snoop, Snoopity Snoop Dogg, that's why he did what he did. He shut his damn mouth when he was talking about Gayle King because Gayle King knows some folks that can make Snoop Dogg's life really, really bad. And that's why his punk ass did a flip-flop and left her the hell alone. And the only reason why you talking, because you know, nobody don't give a damn about what you say. But if Clarence Thomas and some of these other coon, if they really took y'all serious, some of you would be disappearing. Because they have that kind of connection, they have that type of power, and you don't have nothing. 
They don't care about what you're talking about. Laurel says, we the only people that don't demand better because it comes with real responsibility. I'm going to do an Oprah. It comes with responsibility. <laughs> we the only people that don't demand better because it comes with real responsibility. That's the number one thing. You don't want to be held responsible. You don't want to be held accountable for nothing. So it's easy to follow Tariq Nasheed because as long as you give him a few dollars, that's all, you know, he, you know, like you, there's nothing expected of you. And you can follow Farrakhan because that's the same thing. He don't really trip off of it as long as you give him his money. But with the Mississippi campaign, it's a whole different story. Everybody must be held accountable and held responsible so it can work properly. Because just like Soul Brother 85 said, because freedom is not free. Somebody has to pay the price. Somebody has to accept that responsibility and hold themselves accountable. And if you don't want freedom, just say so. No big deal. The majority of our people was all, they didn't care. They was all right being slaves. They didn't know what freedom was anyway. What's a freedom? What is that? Being like white people? That's that's what freedom is to you right now. Trying to copy white folks or other folks. You don't know nothing about no damn freedom. You think freedom. It's copying what white folks do or what they do in Arabia or, or whatever. You don't know. No such thing as free because free is really fee. There's a price to be paid. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, yeah, when Snoop Dogg was going through all that bull crap, Brother Talib said, where was the gangster and Snoop Dogg during that debacle. He shut the hell up. And this Snoop Dogg is corny. Then he gonna hang out with that uh, Martha Stewart, that old white lady. That's supposed to be cute. Here you are, all these years you put on this gangster persona and you a bad boy, got caught up with a gun and shot somebody. When it's all said and done, here you are cooking, baking cookies with Martha Stewart. These are your examples. These are the people folks listening to. And Snoop Dogg kissed Minister Farrakhan ass. So you know what he's about. Because you're satisfied with nothing. And Snoop, Snoop Dogg can do that because he's a millionaire. So if Farrakhan produce something or don't, he don't give a damn. But here you are, raggedy and out of doors, sacrificing your money, willing to sacrifice your life, and you're not holding your leaders accountable. That's your fault. There's no more excuses because now you got myself, you got other brothers and sisters who probably don't even make videos. We're rising to the top. We're coming up out of it. Because either you're going to live or die. And if you want to die, if you want to go extinct, so be it. I don't want to, after 500 years, I don't think that you, you should go out like a punk. R. Kelly is still in prison. Farrakhan not. Farrakhan ain't thinking about R. Kelly no more. He, when you get locked up, nobody give a damn about you like that no more. Especially when they know you can't do nothing for him. R. Kelly can't do nothing for Farrakhan no more. He don't give a damn about R. Kelly. Probably, probably haven't even visited the man since he's been in prison. That's how these folks do it. I was 
in the nation of Islam nine years. They ain't give a damn about me. How you doing, brother? They ain't seen you in a while. When you leave, when when they when these people cannot use you, they don't give a damn about you like that no more. Absolutely. When you serve no purpose any longer, they don't give a damn about you no more. But I thought we was brothers. We should be brothers whether I'm in the temple or out of the temple. They never was my brother. That was nothing but a church. That ain't nothing but some that ain't nothing but a scam. It ain't real. We supposed to be brothers and sisters in the church, out of the church, in the mosque, out the mosque. You don't like me because you don't like what I have to say and all these type of things. AB says it's all about self with our people. We're selfish. And you are getting exactly what you deserve. And they don't like my voice because they don't want, want to be reminded of the reality that you are getting exactly what you deserve. What is it that you deserve? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. Brother Talil was talking about the uh, brothers that got falsely accused of Malcolm X murder. The nation of Islam did nothing for them. And one of the brothers that's still alive, I saw an interview. <clears throat> it, 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 it almost made me want to cry. Because he really believed those people was going to take care of his family for him while he was locked up and all this and help him. They didn't do nothing. They didn't do nothing. And Sister Betty was telling Malcolm about that. You need to start, you need to start taking care of yourself, looking out for your own interests. Those people aren't your friends. That uh, they're, they're not they're not looking out for you like that, Malcolm. But Malcolm was caught up in the brainwashing, and it cost him his life. But he's an example. And there's many things in the past that we learn from so we don't make the same mistakes. See, for me, I always loved Elijah Muhammad, but I, I never saw him as this divine person. I saw him like my grandfather, just a man that wanted to help black people do better. I, I never said, oh, honorable Elijah Muhammad and worship. I never, I've never been into that kind of stuff. I ain't never worship nobody. I will honor you. I will give you respect. But I'm not into that fanatical stuff. Don't get. Some people think that I get caught up in it. I, I love you so much. I'll let anybody go at the drop of a hat. Because I'm not your slave. How you doing at 226, J226? I'm nobody's slave. And I'm, I would never want ask you to be my slave. You don't, be, you don't be fanatical over nobody. Nobody better than you are. Elijah Muhammad is not better than me. Malcolm X is not better than me. I don't want to be Malcolm X. I want to be myself. Don't be like Angel Snuff No. 7. Be yourself. Because yourself could be much, much greater than Angel Snuff No. 7. You could be the one to take it to the next level. But you try to be like me, you ain't going nowhere. Because I'm doing what's required in my time. What you deal in your time should be totally different. Because you wasn't around in my time. But we still dealing with old stuff. 
because we ain't gone nowhere. Still in the same damn spot. We got brother Denzel in the house. He says, I shared your video to all the people that I know. <laughs> I don't think they watch you though. It don't make any difference. You shared, what do they say in the church? I just gave you the information. Whatever, what you do with that's your business. That's what people tell me. Well, I told you. That's right, you told me. I know. Now I'm telling you. Because I already know what you're talking about anyway. I've been around this stuff for over 40 years. What you going to tell me? You still got Similac on your mouth. What these old geezers going to tell me? Because the only thing I'm going to tell them, you a damn loser. You a failure. What the hell are you going to tell me? Things take time, your ass getting ready to die. That's how long, that's how much time it done took. You getting ready to die now, sir. Things take time. Because you don't know what the hell you doing. That's why things take time. And there should be a progress report. Even, even when things take time, if somebody was building an add-on to your house, you would go to them, where are you at now? Well, you see over here, we got this down, and over here we got this down, and uh, it's going to take longer than we thought, but we got this. Okay, see, you can deal with that. These people give you nothing. They, this man going to come to my platform and talk about things take time. What you building? What you got? Did you build a wall over here? Okay, I, I see that. You got a wall over there? Okay, I see that. Okay, I, I got it. Thing, things are behind schedule. But you can see things are happening. He offers nothing except talk. And then he got bold. I, yeah, I'm ready. Let's, let's do that. Then he pumped, turned right around and pumped out. <laughs> Brother to live. The man said he ready. Let's do that. And then he turned right around. Then he waste no time. He turned right around and pumped out. Even even that coon, even that coon X-ray, whatever it was. Even he said, damn, you got you pumped out. And I don't think that that coon, uh, whatever, that's not necessarily our friend. I think it's Alquan. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, even he said, damn, you turned right around and pumped out. Because, Lucy, you got a lot of spraining to do. And see, they get hyped up on these videos and all this talk. But when it comes down to proving some substance that you don't have, it's a different ball game. You don't have nothing, sir. You don't have anything. Brother uh, Talib said, this crack and other dope has destroyed us. There is, where is pro-blackity? And that's, an, I'm going to say this and get out of here too. See, that's another thing that we don't take into consideration. A lot of us are crack babies. And a lot of our people are victims of the crack epidemic and they had crack children. And a lot of a lot of generation X A lot of Generation X is crack babies, crack children, and they are out here, plus the Similac, drinking the Similac and the fake milk and the chemicals. I need to get out of here because my uh, this this uh this thing is getting low, so we're just gonna go ahead and end this this live stream. I might come back tomorrow night because I want to talk about these 
dumbass folks on uh, from Kevin Samuels uh, channel on Facebook. I want to talk about that a little bit. Brother Talib says the crack children. Now the crack children on this other crazy stuff. So yeah, let me get out of here. Uh, I'm running out of time on here. This this uh, app is acting crazy. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but uh, might come back tomorrow night if I feel feel good and and uh, talk about these uh these incels these uh woman hating type folks. On that note, let's get out of here and uh, J226 and Brother Talib, everybody in the chat room, those out there in the in the atmosphere. Thank you for joining us, and we are already five thousand.